I have a gift from your dad. It's a wizard staff. Dad was a wizard. Your dad was an electrician. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I made the wizard staff from the movie Onward. My son's birthday is coming up and he desperately wants to be a wizard and practice real magic. So I thought no better time to make him his own staff and get the kids involved in a project out in the garage. It has to be this big and look like the color of the wood. Yeah. And it has to have a phoenix gem that makes the power work so quick so that I won't have to practice it 100 times. As you can see, the first steps of this project were to get a 2x6 piece of lumber and spray adhesive down the template which I had printed to scale off my computer using 85 by 11 sheets taped together. Make sure it's nice and pushed down. Does it feel sticky? Yeah, it feels sticky. The next part is we're going to cut this out. So over at the bandsaw, I can cut as close to the outline of the staff as possible without going over as I will sand to this line later. My boys are keeping a watchful eye on me, making sure I'm doing a good job. And it's good to get them involved holding the off cuts and stuff like that. They know that their hands can't go anywhere near that table or blade. So they're at a safe distance, just keeping a helpful eye out on me. Next, I can cut out two triangular shaped pieces out of that two by six, as this is gonna widen up the top of the staff where the prongs need to attach. And we're gonna cut the paper off there. Okay, so you guys hold that, and I'll point the heat gun at the bottom. Keep pulling slowly. Uh-oh. Okay, pull it up. Okay, we're gonna flip it. Oh yeah! So now you're gonna help me put glue on, Giles. And then you rub it with your finger. If you ever glued two pieces of wood that were a regular shape together, you'll know that they want to slip and slide all over the place. Now after struggling with this for a while, I decided screw it. I drove in two brad nails in both sides to keep these triangular shaped pieces in place while I applied clamping pressure. The holes are entirely unnoticeable after the finished product, so this really was the best solution for me. As you can see, I used a piece of quarter inch hardboard to space up the nail gun as it shot in the nails. This will allow me a good surface to grab on with some channel locks later to pull these nails out, as I don't want to be cutting through these nails repeatedly as I'm carving this piece up. Over at the chop saw, I cut off the extra and flush up all three edges. Then over at the band saw, I can remove the excess material hanging over the edges. And then I can kind of freehand carve some of the hard edges off the corners and make it just a little bit more round. Next over at the strip sander, I can give everything a rough sanding to get the handle as smooth as possible, as well as the oscillating drum sander to get in spaces where I can't with a strip sander. Next over at the router table, I have a half inch roundover bit installed. This is gonna ease over as much as the handle as I can on the router table, as the router table has dust collection, so I wanna avoid free routing as much as possible. Because the width of the top, the router table can't get all the way, so next over at my triple screw gear vise, you see I have set up my router with the same half inch bit. This allows me to get much further and closer to the top with that roundover. The downside to doing this is now there's dust everywhere. Next I have the staff installed in the vise vertically with the top piece pointed up. I can now mark out the center and using a four inch hole saw, drill as far down as I can to kind of round out the shape. This hole will be used later to hold the Phoenix gem and the rounded shape really helps for shaping over at the bandsaw. At the bandsaw, I can follow that circular shape going forwards and backwards against the blade to take off a little bit at a time and just kind of nibble away and carve in the shape that I want, just getting this to blend from a circle into the staff handle shape. Then over at the belt sander, I can blend in everything nice and smooth and get it ready for hand sanding. So the way I decided to create the fingers coming out the top of the staff and twisting around, 
was to take some thin strips of 2x10 material and cut them to about a millimeter thick and just layer them, glue them, layer them, glue them, and this would eventually keep its shape and I could blend them into a nice organic shape after the fact. So I was searching all over my house for some kind of cylinder that I could use to wrap these strips around. As it turns out, a big bottle of Parmesan cheese was the exact right shape. So in order to start attaching these fingers to the staff body, I first mark out three locations of where they're going to start, and then I can lay out the pieces of wood on an angle that I like wrapping around, and mark out the exact shape that I'm going to carve into the staff with a chisel, and this is going to let them sit in and get a little more bite with the glue later. With those recesses all carved out, I can fill the area with glue and lay down my first strip. I keep this strip in place with two quick release clamps and a spring clamp at the top. I did notice there was kind of a void towards the bottom, so I used my drill to pinpoint some weight on the bottom to push it in and kind of act as a clamp. Next up begins the fun part, slathering these layers with glue and placing them on one at a time. Everything gets held in place with a whole whack of elastics as I work my way up the cylinder of Parmesan cheese. Then I can simply go into the top and use some quick spring clamps to keep everything in place as the elastics apply firm pressure all the way up the length of the cylinder. Every time I would do a glue up, I would leave it to dry overnight once it was dry, all the elastics came off, slipped down to the bottom, and this was just a better location for them than trying to come over the top each time. It was around this time I decided that I was a little more comfortable, and I would try gluing up six pieces at once. And gluing up these six pieces was definitely a little more challenging, but still very doable. It was around this time that I decided I'd just be wasting a bunch of time and glue if I kept them at the same length. So I decided to chop everything down to the final length, or within a half inch of what the final length would be. With the strips now at this shorter length, I was using less glue, and it was a little bit more manageable, but honestly I felt it was a little bit harder to bend them now and keep them in place at this shorter length. But all in all, still not too bad. So for the final glue up of this staff, I decided to get the birthday boy involved in making it himself. He first started by helping me get rid of the elastics on the previous layer, and then we started sanding everything down to get rid of the excess squeeze out. With that having dried overnight, I can go ahead and remove all the elastics for the final time, and I can go ahead and remove the Parmesan cheese container from the center, taking that long 3 inch screw out of the middle. Then over at the chop saw, I can very carefully even out all three prongs. Next over at my bandsaw, I can go ahead and try to follow the curve of this as if I don't follow the curve of this, I'm going to chop off one of the upper prongs as I'm carving through the bottom. Just trying to remove as much of the excess glue as possible and even up the prongs to almost roughly a square. This time at the bottom, I'm using the bandsaw to carve away where the prongs meet the body of the staff. I'm going to keep kind of nibbling away at this until I get a shape I like on all three prongs where it meets the body. 
Next I can use a half inch roundover bit in my plunge router to kind of freehand around the prongs and follow the outside contours on both sides. This allows me to remove a lot of material really fast and then I can start shaping things later with my power file. So now I can go ahead with my power file. I have installed an 80 grit belt which is pretty aggressive for this and took away material pretty quick. This did take the longest time out of the whole project and it was kind of nerve wracking as I always thought I was eating away too much in the corners. But all in all I think it turned out really good and carving these inside pieces out was really handy using this. I couldn't imagine doing that all by hand. Now that the power file carving is done, I can go ahead and give everything a 120 grit sanding and then come back with 220 grit before applying stain to the whole staff. This is a dark walnut stain that I'm simply brushing on very heavy and I'm gonna come back after I'm done applying the stain with a towel and kind of wipe off the excess. This really gave me a much lighter look that I was really going for with this staff. I didn't want it to be super dark. Next over at the chop saw I can chop up some 2x4 scraps as this is going to be our phoenix gem. I can then sand one side of these 2x4s to make them nice and flat as they had a little bit of a cut to them as this is going to give us a really good surface during the glue up. I forgo using clamps and simply stick it in my linear actuator vise to dry overnight. With the glue up complete I can now rough it down to a square shape and the reason I didn't do this on the table saw is I just felt the piece of wood was too small at this point. If it was a little bit longer, which I probably should have done to make all of this a lot easier, is I would have brought it over to the table saw if it was longer and chopped it down into an octagon right then and there. This would have been a little less nerve wracking for me over at the miter saw as I cut these really small angles on this really small piece of wood. So now that we have our octagonal prism shape, I go ahead and use an auxiliary fence as I don't want this piece to slip through the cracks in my miter saw fence, and I just nibble between the lines, carving out a rough diamond shape on the top. In order to cut the shallower angles of the bottom of the diamond, I'm going to bring it over to my bandsaw with a miter gauge and a fence, and I'm going to run it through the blade using a stop block over and over until I get that final pointy diamond shape. Next up at the disc and belt sander I can smooth out all the edges and then I can get rid of all those bandsaw marks along the bottom of the diamond. Now it's ready for stain and upon asking my son what color it should be, he said red. I used a screw in the bottom as there's going to be a dowel here to hold this piece so I don't get stain all over my hands and then just clamped it in the vise to dry overnight. Next over the course of a couple days I went ahead and applied some water-based polyurethane semi-gloss to the entire staff and the phoenix gem, three coats sanding in between. <laughs> Next at the drill press with the 3 8 inch bit, I can go ahead and drill a hole in the bottom of the phoenix gem and glue in a dowel. This end of the dowel will be glued in place, but the other end won't, as my son wants to be able to take the phoenix gem in and out of the staff. And with that, the project is complete. Pull the other string. Is it missing something? A phoenix gem. Oh, what about this? <gasps> the phoenix gem. Can you do magic? I need practice. I have to practice this outside because it's a really dangerous one. So mom always go outside for me to practice. Photo or
Giles got you the book of spells. So now I can practice my spells? Yep. Okay, now try. Okay, let's let's try a spell. Pull through our sucker. Uh, <laughs> yo! Did you do magic? Yeah. I'll keep this for myself, okay? Okay. I'll practice it in my bedroom all the time. Okay, practice it all the time. So I'll practice it whenever I need.